Ah, oh, welcome to this week's vlog. And this is a very a special vlog. Now, it's, it's, I, in some ways I feel that I live a very privileged life. I meet the nicest people out on the cut and I get to meet them, some of them, in their own boats. And today we meet a really, really nice guy. And you'll know him as Baked On Board. We all know him as the Pineapple Man. I mean, the Pizza <laughs> Man. <laughs> now. Hello. Cat. No, Cat. No, you won't mind. So, we have got a terrific vlog. Now, I really enjoyed meeting Paul from Baked On Board. And without further ado, I think we should get on and look at this... Uh, hear what he has to say because he's a really interesting guy and um, yeah let's get on with the vlog shall we do you know what? it's great you go out you walk around and you see a boat that you know now many of you that are watching this vlog will also know this boat he's prolific uh, contributor to the trading weekends um, and he does really really tasty food let me give you a clue know who it is yet well I'm gonna sneak and have a little knock and see if you'll come and have a chat with us yeah Let's find out something about Paul from Baked On Board, the pizza delivery man. Well, he's not really delivery, he cooks them and then he delivers them. Ready? Let's go. Come on, then. let's go. Hello there, sir. I'm very good. Can we have permission to come aboard and, and have a little chat? That would be lovely. Thank you. Excuse all the clutter. This is the uh, the business end, you might say. The business end of the boat. Sugar? Oh, no, thank you. No, no, just not. Thank you. Yes, oven here. And a big table here where I make all the pizzas. Watch yeah. the oven, make the pizzas. And then they come out of the oven like so and go over there onto that table where they get dressed and finished and boxed and sent. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a slightly harebrained notion but there we are. So it was a totally different view for you watching now to see how the actual pizzas are manufactured from inside the boat. It's not very often anybody sees this angle actually to be fair. Oh well, we're very honoured and we're very grateful to you Paul for oh, letting so us welcome, come and have a look. You're welcome. Like I said, it's uh, slightly more disorganised than this when we're cooking, and but on a, it just finished now, just finished the weekend at Nantwich, so uh, yeah, little cruise back, all good. Okay, well I'm going to let you carry on and make us a brew, yep. and then we'll have a little chat. No worries, mate. And find yourself a seat, and I'll. Uh... Oh, Paul. Hello, <laughs> it's great to meet you. Now, we've had a lot of banter between us, uh, uh, jokingly, of course. This, I know where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> This but is, in the past, is, this, and, this is the and, P word. Yes, but we're not going to mention it. <laughs> but, well, but I just wanted to say we've had a lot of banter over the time. But genuinely, you do make some fantastic Thank pizzas. Thank you. Now I've I've not actually yet had been around when you've been cooking them, but I will be soon, I'm sure, um, because I'm now following where you are. And one yeah. day we're going to be in the right place at the, the right, right time. time. I hear it from boaters all the time. Yeah, and then you pass boaters and they're going, "You're going the wrong way," and I'm like, "No, you're going the wrong way." Yeah. We have this all the time. It's a, it's a, it's a running thing with the people on the cup. So, look, on. how did all this start? What was the driving force behind putting pizzas on a boat? Which is a really really the, good idea. The driving force behind it was um, myself and my ex, my ex partner yeah. David. We lived in Cornwall. I've been running pubs or been involved in the licensed trade for 30 years and for the last 15 of that I was running pubs, 20 of that I was running pubs right. and it was killing me <laughs> and it was 24-7, 365 days of the year, the last pub I had had letting rooms and we started taking narrowboat holidays 
and I fell in love with it. We fell in love with it. We fell in love with the dream, fell in love, and I said, right, I want him on a boat. And over the, la over the three, four, five years we took narrowboat holidays, we started to think, well, we could sell everything and live on a boat, but what would we do? So we looked at ways of earning a living. It was going to be a coffee shop um, and a barber shop because Dave was a hairdresser. So that was the first idea. And then we looked at so many different things. And I'd be working downstairs in the pub and he'd be upstairs in the flat. And he got, I got upstairs one night and he said, I've got it. I went, go on. He went, we can put a pizza, put a pizza oven on the boat. And I went, really? Seriously? And that's where it started. That was in 2017. And we started looking for boats and started looking for whether or not it was practical. Did a bit of online research to find out that other people had actually done it not in this part of the world, but down south particularly. And in the February of 2018, he quit his job as a hairdresser. I quit the pub, sold all our shackles and our belongings, and you know what it's like, pared everything down yeah. and bought this. And we, we sourced the oven from um, a company called Bushman who make wood-fired ovens. Um, and they supplied us with an oven and we took the boat to Chaz Harden and we had the oven delivered to Chaz and we went can you put that on there and he went yeah fab <laughs> and this was this was the kitchen it was reverse layout which is exactly what we wanted yeah and there was a point at which we nearly ended up with two kitchens and I remember sitting here and saying to David hang on this is madness because this had a big kitchen and then a dinette here and that's all there was um, so we then ripped out all of the kitchen and all the cupboards and everything and the worktops from the kitchen all went to that end and the pizza kitchen which you've seen was was built from there and that was in we opened in may of 2018 because you've got quite a name haven't you now quite a following as well well you sell out quite frequently as well the, the, the thing with selling out is it's weird because whenever you tell anybody you've sold out they think oh my god he's sold out that's amazing but what that means generally if we sell out in the summer that means we've sold 100 pizzas which is amazing Whoa. If I do barbage on a Friday night and I say I'm sold out, I've probably, this time of year, I've probably only sold 24. Because selling out means I've used all the dough we've prepared for that day. Yeah. So whilst everybody, it's, the, it's almost a victim of its own success in so much as people don't get in touch late because they think they might have missed the boat. Which is massively frustrating because actually uh, sometimes I go, have you got any slots left? I'm like, yes, it's winter, I've got hundreds of slots left. It's just, uh, so the, the selling, it does sell out and there is a great following. Um, and now um, with the regular route, I mean, in the summer I went from here, four directions, Barbridge and Antwich, Rembury Whitchurch, Beeston, Waverton, and down to uh, Northwich, the boat lift. And that was kind of the summer plan. And yes, lots and lots of followers, two and a half thousand followers on Instagram. And I don't even know how many on Facebook now. So, so for, for anyone that's watching, um, they can obviously follow you, um, as I do, on Baked On Board, yep. on your Facebook page, yep. and you actually put where you're going to be. Yep. Can they actually ring you or contact you, yep. message you, and book a pizza for a particular... Yeah, that's the, so in lockdown, so going back to 2020, yeah. is that the first lockdown? It was, yeah. yes. March of 2020, I'd been working at Lockgate Coffee Shop in Beeston in the winter, and I was coming out of that, and then that was closed because of lockdown. And I contacted CRT and said, can I start trading again? Uh, the advice from the business boating manager was, you need to follow your local guidelines. And I'm like, well, there are no local guidelines. And he said, that's all the advice I can give you. So I had a bit of a think about it, and I sent him back, uh, Richard Delve, I sent him back an email saying, uh, takeaways are open everywhere. They haven't closed, so I'm a takeaway. Tick. I'm working from home, tick, and essential travel includes travelling to work, and I'm travelling to work. And I put these three ticks in these three boxes and I got an email back from him saying, um, you've, yes, absolutely, completely right, you've ticked all the boxes, you are following the local guidelines. So I opened up, and the way I started doing, when I, that's when I started doing the time slots. Right. So if I said I'm going to be in Barbridge from five o'clock till eight o'clock, what time do you want it? And people would message me and say, can I have that, that and that at five o'clock? And I go, no, the five o'clock slot's gone, but you can have ten past. And I'll do ten past, twenty past, half past, and I'll do ten minute slots around the clock. And since then, I've never looked back because you know who's coming, what time they're coming, and what they want when they get there. 
which is a you know the perfect scenario really so when I look at dough for the day it's frozen it comes to me as a frozen ball of dough all oh, right um, because I couldn't make my own dough I couldn't make my own dough I couldn't in this environment I couldn't do it you wouldn't get consistency you wouldn't get it would never be the same twice um, I look at what I've got, got booked and then think right I've got 24 booked I'm gonna pick up a few we're gonna book late I'm gonna get a few walking so I defrost enough dough for 48 and hope to sell them so when it says sold out like I said that could mean I've sold a hundred pieces or I could have only sold 20 because if I've got nothing booked I'm still gonna go and gonna do it but I'm not gonna prepare very much dough because obviously there's a wastage issue that makes that makes absolute sense yes yeah. so the, the time slots is was just a complete game changer so there you go folks if you want a pizza yeah. book it book it. <laughs> <laughs> it Facebook Facebook Messenger Instagram um, you can phone me there's also the website um, and all the information for the the locations of where yeah. and when's is also on the website so uh, I've got two phones a tablet a laptop and <laughs> so there's no excuses things then. just ping there are day, <laughs> yeah. times of day where everything's yeah. just pinging and because I've got two phones one is business phone and one is private phone that hasn't worked at all I've now got three accounts on each phone so both phones ping so yeah, yeah. it's but yeah, old-fashioned ways. Short, send me a letter, so, which might not work terribly well. It might not work right. terribly well. Yeah, I'm no, doing no. Get the advertising. And yeah, like absolutely. All the bait yeah. on board mugs out. Yeah. So, so basically, you could have a new channel, BBE, Bait by Eat. Yes. <laughs> we are Bob. It's Bob. quite good, because when we trade with baked the barge on board, baked yeah. on board, when we trade with barge in booze, <coughs> yes. they're bib. Bait, bait, bait on board and barge in booze. So we, when we get, when we go to Anderton with those boys, we call it with the Bib, Bib and Bob show. The Bib and Bob show. Yeah. Love it, love it. <laughs> yeah, we do very well when we trade with, with barge in booze. I have to say, that's always a really good one because you got a beer boat moored right next to us, so, and then they come, they order their pizza, and it's going to be half an hour. Right, sit on the grass. That, that just sounds. Oh, it's, that sounds like a perfect it's, it's combination. Wonderful. That is perfect, perfect. So. How when you when you sort of started going off on their boats, that was sort of way back and when? that was uh, if we started into it was about 2013 2014 I think right and we hired from Chas Harden okay. we, we had uh, Raherin 14 15 maybe we had Raherin and then we did we hired from Anglo Welsh at Bunbury we hired at Older Maston down on the Kennet and Avon. Um, and some Birmingham trips. I'm from mm -hmm. Birmingham originally, so I've got lots oh, of friends and friends there, so that was quite good. And then I had the big 50th birthday, and we had a two week cruise where we had some people for a couple of days, and then we had some more people for a couple of days, and then they got off and they went, and then the other people came back, and that was <laughs> so yeah, the, after the that's when we were really seriously thinking that you know this was going to be the but future. Was like, yeah, do you actually regret living on a marabout, you know, actually moving on and selling everything? No. Not for one day. I've never met anyone that has. Well, if you remember, <laughs> on the Forgo narrowboating, I was trying to, I was trying to um, put a question to everybody on there, which finally managed to get seen. I realised if you type in capitals, by the way, nobody can see it. I don't know why that is, but <laughs> I, I, I know, no, it's, it's weird. Um, and Steve, Steve was saying to me, "Yes, we can see your question now." My question was, "Do any of you guys ever imagine being going back to bricks and mortar?" That was last month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, because I, d I completely don't. And people ask me, and I'm like, no, I can't ever. It might not always be this boat, but it will always be. It'll always be a narrow boat. So what? What is it? What is the actual fascination? In do you feel from your perspective? I think, I think the fascination is the fact that. A, it's the it's the peace. It's the tranquility. I mean, I woke up in Nantwich this morning. Um, and the sun was just the sun was rising, and it was misty on the water, and it was beautiful, and it's that coupled with the fact that you take everything you take your home with you so it's a bit like having a camper van but you're able to access far more remote spots you can pretty much stop where you like I mean this is a common thing I'll tell people at the moment is the very first thing that goes through my mind when I open my eyes in the morning is where am I genuinely every single day of my life that's what I think because because apart from a couple of days a week in the winter when I'm in here and I don't move, I'm like, oh, where am I? And I could be up the Langoslin or down the Shroppy or it's yeah yeah yeah. And and I, I really like that. There, were, there have been days where I've literally had to open the curtains to just remind myself where I am. And it doesn't matter how many times you do the same stretch of water, no, it changes, no, it, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And yeah. I'm always looking for mooring <laughs> spots as well. 
Yeah. So if I'm going that way, I'm thinking, what am I doing on the way back? Or oh, I've got a spare day, or I've got, I'm going to stop there on the way back. And I'm always looking for spots where people have moored boats, and think, particularly with a shroppy shelf, and you think, yeah. shelfy, shelfy, and then you think, hang on a minute, there's a gap there. That boat's tight against the. Um, I, I follow um, the guys from um, the Bird Box and Jenny Wren. Oh, right. Colin yeah. and Andrea. Yeah. And Colin's got some great little spots, and I see him, and he has a habit of um, just tidying up the grass where he steps onto his boat. I've seen spots there's, like there's, that. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a couple on the way up towards Barbridge, and where you think it's all concrete shelf from here to Barbridge once you get past the, the Armco at, at Bridge 4. Um, and it's not at all. And it, there's, I look for them now, and I think I could I could put my boat there. <laughs> that's a good tip. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. mustn't tell anybody. No, that. no, no, we'll, no. We'll no, keep that between that's ourselves. Completely between yeah, the two of us. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't go any further. No, no. We just keep that between that ourselves. Editing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's that. It's the. It's the peace, the tranquility, but I'm also at heart, and I've only realised this in recent years. There's a bit of there's a bit of Romany gypsy in me, I think, somewhere. Yeah. Every time I've ever gone on holiday in my life, the journey has been more interesting than the holiday. I understand that. I've hi I've owned camper vans, I've hired camper vans. In fact I'm hiring a camper van at Christmas to go down to some friends in Wales for Christmas. Um, I've stayed in safari tents, I've stayed in uh, all kinds of accommodation in all kinds of places and it's the it's the journey. It's the journey. Yeah. Talk about journeys then, is there only one particular canal that you really love? Uh, well I had a friend come and visit recently um, and last year she came to visit, stayed for a week and we went, uh, we did the Langoslin, you know what it's like, somebody comes to visit, they're visiting your pier, you've got to do the Langoslin, yeah. you've got to do the Ponkasilty, you, you can do tunnels and bridges and aqueducts and locks, all of the things that people want to see, um, so I love the Langoslin. Uh, this time she came, we had a, a few days down on the Weaver, which I can't wait to do again. Loved it. A canal that we did a few years ago that I'd really like to go back to is the Calden. Calden right. Canal. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely loved I've it. I've not up there. done that yet. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were lucky we just got it when the weather was glorious, but I mean, that is. And it's funny because you get to Utruria and you think, oh God, where the hell am I going? And as soon as you get out of there and you get out into the countryside, Calder Canal is definitely on the list for another visit. Excellent. Yeah, well, I hope to be doing that. Yeah, you should. Next year. So should... I'd like to do the Macclesfield and the. Oh, Peak, Peak Forest. Year. Peak Forest is, is, is been calling to me for three years now. Yeah. Desperately want to get up there as well. Yeah. I reckon I'm going to do that in the spring. I, it's. But it's told it's a good time to go. Yeah. The water it, levels are up. Springtime or autumn time? Yeah. I don't, I mean, look, I had cause to go up the Nagoslin in the height of the summer, but I wouldn't be doing it unless I absolutely had to, because no. it's just, it's too busy for me. Yeah. Did you actually go into the actual basin? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. went up through the Narrows yeah. and everything. Twice, well, three or four times in total we've been to Langoslin, right the way down into the basin. The first time we went, we went with a hire boat, when we had Raherin from Chaz in the October, yeah. we went right the way down to the basin, and there was us and two other boats. Right. On, on the whole basin. When I went up there this summer, um, I got into the basin and there was one spot available. Wow. It was full of hire boats, which obviously it's going yeah, to be. It would be, yeah. Um, which is fine, but it was literally like a holiday camp. Yeah. There was people in the water and there was dinghies and there was barbecues and parties and I was just like, then that's not how I remember did, did it. Did you not open up the oven? And uh, no. No, you didn't do that. No, I was, I was, that was when I was, I got a friend visiting, so yeah. I was, I was fully not working. That's right. Do you ever get asked when you're usual on a relaxation? Does anybody come and knock and say, "Yeah, all the time"? You go to Peter's. So the, the last year when we repainted the boat, I had the the, the baked on board logos put on the on the yeah. on the panels at the front by the front hatches, and we never quite finished the front cratch board, and I was never sure what to do with it. And then, as luck would have it, Andy Russell, who did the painting for me, was about. He was up at Swanley Marina doing some painting on a boat. And uh, I contacted him and said, "Will you paint something on my craft board?" So he's painted now Woodfire Peter in huge letters, yes. which is wonderful. But when I recently took a holiday with um, with my friend Anne and we went down onto the Weaver, before that happened, I got Nick from Cover and Canvas to make me a cover to go over it because yes. I needed to be a bit more incognito. <laughs> it's lovely being recognised, but if you can see those letters on that craft board coming towards you, you get hungry. 
you've already had time to rehearse what you're going to say. So if you're passing in on the boat and they get alongside, they go, oh, was that a... And you go, yes, it was, yeah. hello. <laughs> but by the time they've come from 200 yards away and they've seen wood-fired pizza, they're already, you know, I'll have a margarita, she wants pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's only so much of that. But... We're just winding and we'll be back yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The fact that you're cruising yeah. between... I often between... get this, this, like I said at the beginning, these people, you know, you're going yeah. the wrong way. And I'm like, no, you're going the wrong way. And yeah. we get this a lot. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So you're, you're, you've just done the weekend at Nantwich because there was like a, a, a boat, um, a trading boat fest, wasn't there? This, was no, 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 that's that's not for another couple of weeks. That's two weeks' that's time. Two, that's that? two weeks' time. That's the last weekend in November and the first weekend in December. And that's... So that's two weekends. That's two weekends. And that's a Roving Canal Traders Association floating market. Right. So, folks, you need to be at that. Oh, honestly, that's, anywhere there. That's going to be a, that's going to be a cracker. It'll be the first Christmas market I've done, um, and I've also got um, temporary event notice for alcohol sales that weekend. So I'm doing mulled cider and mulled wine. Wow. And sweet treats. To so be we can decided. have pizza, mulled wine, or mulled yeah, and hot mince pies to follow. And hot mince pies, all on baked on board. Yeah. At Nantwich Christmas Market. Nantwich. Last weekend. Floating Market. Flo Le yeah, it's a, it's a mouthful. Roving Canal Traders Association Floating Christmas Market at Nantwich. And that's the last weekend in November. And the first weekend in December. Fabulous. That sounds absolutely amazing. It's it's good. There's going to... The whole... It, it'll... it'll I'm just trying to choose, choose my words carefully. It may upset some boaters because those moorings along the embankment are reserved for traders. They are. For 10 days. 10 days yeah because it's two successive weekends yes we normally get from the friday of the thursday until the monday yeah effectively they could have had thursday to monday reserved and then taken it off again and then reserved it the following thursday to the following monday but it was decided that the best thing to do was to allow the boaters to stay so, so that will just in case any other boaters are watching um that will be from um like what i call the service bridge but yeah yeah, yeah, bridge. yeah yeah right by the right by the service to point. the aqueduct or beyond the aqueduct no only as far as the aqueduct so it's just that, that stretch that length yeah that length from the from the from the wooden horse bridge we call it oh, yeah. uh, down down to the aqueduct so that okay. that stretch which i think is i think there's 12 boats coming 12 boats Great. and it's everything it's it's there's uh, the the cheese boat will be there. They're always they always draw a really good crowd. Yeah. Um, I've actually got a fellow trader trading with me. Um, her circumstances have changed, and she sells. Uh, she's called Heaven Sent um, Zoe, and she sells handmade candles and beautiful things, and some clothes and various different bits and bobs. Uh, her circumstances have changed, and she's no longer on a boat. So I've said, you see this hatch here, which happens to be spare. So she's going to take over this end of the boat for two weekends. Fabulous. Uh, just because I've got the ability to, you yeah. know, there's a spare hatch going there and she can put all of her stock on board. So we're going to have a bit of a, it should be quite. So, so those weekends you're going to be making plenty of dough to make the pizzas. Yes, plenty of dough <laughs> makes plenty of dough. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we did say one of the things when we started baked on board was um, buy our pizzas. We need the dough because it was just too many, too, too good an opportunity to miss. <laughs> Right, I'm going to come and find you out that weekend. Mm. So, Paul, thank you so much You're for the welcome. time. You're very welcome. Um, I'll make sure this one goes out before then, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we can get that out for you. Um, and I just want to thank you so much for inviting oh, me welcome. on board this boat. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's and, nice to see. Um, you. It's lovely to actually meet you and have a chat with you, and to meet Spud the dog. I'm afraid Spud the dog is asleep down here. Spud's unconscious. But, um, if you're around, please come say hello to Paul. Please yeah. say hello to Spud. And if I'm not cooking, I'm not cooking. And if he's not cooking, you're going the wrong way. Yeah. Paul, cheers, mate. Cheers. Have a, have a great Christmas. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Cheers. And a cheers. happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that brilliant? Did you enjoy that? Yeah. He's great, isn't he, Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very interesting. <coughs> now, you've met Paul yes. um, without realising who he was because you saw him outside the pub and I didn't when we were yeah. at the Shoppy Fly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I get to know people. You're, yeah, you are. Picking you, you, them out. You know faces <laughs> better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is a really lovely guy. Now, look, 
If you're in Nantwich on the weekend of the 27th and 28th of November, I believe I've got the right dates there. It's a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I think on the Saturday we're going to go there, aren't we? Yeah. We can actually have our first baked on board pizza. Woohoo! We're bringing pineapple. Yeah. But don't <laughs> tell Paul. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, isn't it? That's yeah. right. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and there, I think there's 12 other trading boats yeah. there. And for those of you that know Nantwich, if you know where the Wooden Horse is, by the Wooden Horse Bridge as it's known, which is down by the Servitudes, all the way up to the aqueduct is going to be trading boats. And as, as I said, I believe there's 12. It's going to be a great opportunity to come along and get your Christmas gifts. So yeah. we're, we're going to have a great time, aren't we? We're yeah. going to have a look at those as well, yeah. I wonder if the sweetie man will be there. I hope not. <laughs> oh, and, and oh, there's a, there's a um, drinks. Oh, there's drinks. Yes, this this week, yes. um, um, Paul is going to have a drink there, aren't we? Mold wine. Mold wine and um, something cider. Mold cider. Yeah. I cannot wait. Um, good job we're not driving. Is all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Very much yeah. so. Yeah. Anyway, you lovely people, thank you so much for watching my vlog this week. And before I go, it's very, very important that on Tuesday night, this coming Tuesday, at 7pm, is Forgo Narrowboating with Trev Travels. In fact, I'll put it up there. So don't miss it. It's our last regular Forgo Narrow Boating of 2021, the next one being on Christmas Day, but more about that uh, in a future vlog. So, uh, thank you again. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for all your lovely comments and for all my Facebook family. I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And that just leaves us to say, please do look after yourselves. Please keep yourselves safe. Um, there's lots of nasty bugs going around at the moment don't don't get any of them you know you're not allowed to basically we don't want you will we want you to have a great time in the run up to christmas we want you to have the christmas that you haven't been able to have for the last couple of the years due to this awful pandemic that's been going around so please keep yourselves safe look after yourselves and this is ian and carol from on board morning star saying Zara. bye bye